data-driven unit test in Visual Studio 2012. What's good about that? So this gives us a, <coughs> let's say we have a starting point of some test data and I've put various inputs and expected results. So you can see here we've got uh, a number one and a number two which are input and for a test method uh, for a method that doesn't add we would expect the sum to be four and then looking down the bottom line minus five plus two should be minus three and then in tandem with that we have test code and there's a reference to the column headings here but there is no reference to the data itself Great. So yeah, so the test code reads in the test data at runtime and it spits out some results. And in Visual Studio that will look something like that. Maybe Visual Studio with ReSharper, but yeah, something like that. And what it does, so you see these four references to adding two integers returns a sum, it executes this test method once for every row or item of data that it finds. And this could be, in my case, this is sourced from Excel, but it could be from a CSV file or a database or an XML file, etc. I'm using the OLADB data provider. I tried for a while to use the ODBC, but it was not unpredictable, but well, it was working one day, I did a rebuild and the next day it wasn't working and didn't seem a lot of point in struggling with that and just went onto the OLADB. So if you're persuaded by my experience, that's the way that I would go. Let's do some code. So we'll create a new solution. It's going to be a class library and we'll call it data driven demo. See if that builds. Okay, out of site that says build succeeded right now let's add in a and I know this is the wrong way around but let's add in a unit test project okay that it wants all of these to be constants we're not going to do that because that's not going to serve our purposes in a moment so let's run that see if that passes And that's all good. The next thing we want to do is to update our test code to look somewhat like this. So in our test, we obviously have already said it's a test method. Now, we want to point it at the spreadsheet that I've created so all it is a plain old 2013 as it happens Excel spreadsheet. So the one we're going for is this one here where we have the provider name, the connection string, the table name, which in this case is going to be the sheet that we're using in the workbook and the data access method, which is one of random or sequential. Right, so so far we've got our provider name, we've got our connection string in a data source. Again, we're pointing back to the, the Excel spreadsheet and it's a Excel 12 by from its point of view. And then we're going to finally in there put in the the table name 
in its terms, which is actually the work, the um, sorry, the sheet in our case, and we'll just access it sequentially. So that should run, but what it won't do is so it will execute those four times or however many rows there are in this spreadsheet, but obviously there's nothing, there are no parameters in, in there for it to deal with. So it will execute the test four times, but it's going to be exactly the same test. And that's fine. I lied, there are actually five rows in there. Take a look at those in a moment. Coming back to here then, so what we have missing at the moment is we need to uh, reference the the test context. Now we can start replacing these hard-coded values. We've got this fifth row of values in there, which is why we saw the test executed five times. Um, and it is called. So this is the the actual sheet it's referencing data.xlsx. Now we have our test context up there, then we can start making use of it to grab our values from our spreadsheet. Okay, so let's factor that out. Right, so we're going, we want to pass in our string. So we can grab that and that. So that was lowercase. I don't think these are case. In, uh, I don't think they're case sensitive. Right. So now, if things are okay, then that should give us five executions of this test, each using a different row from our spreadsheet. Yeah, let's run that. Great. So not really a lot to say about that. <laughs> it's, it's done what we wanted it to do. If we, let's deliberately break it a moment by changing one of the values in the spreadsheet. Fact, let's let's break two. Um, so we expect because we've asked for this sequentially, we expect the second and the fifth rows in sequence to break. So we'll save that away. We'll go back to our test. We'll rerun the test. And the second one failed. So it's base zero and the fifth, the final one failed. So that's good. I thought what might be helpful as well is, let's just run that once just to make sure all is healthy. I thought what might be helpful as well is just to show you some of the errors that I, that you might see when you're trying to get this to work. So if we start off by having a non-existent file, what does that look like? couldn't find the object sheet one dollar. So what's interesting there is you might think, oh, well, it's found the file, just can't find the sheet. That isn't the case here. The problem is that it cannot find the file despite what it says. Let's make that okay again. If we change the name of the provider, what does that do to a non-existent provider?
couldn't find the request, at least it's what it's, is actually the case. Couldn't find the framework provider, so that's handy. If we put a little bit of nonsense in here, this is in the connection string now. Provider is not registered on the local machine, so that makes sense as well. Let's come back here and change that back. If we now, now this one threw me for quite a while. Extended properties, at some point I removed the space for some reason. If we now run that test, could not find installable ISAM. So what I would say, if you get that, then check your spaces or what it considers inappropriate spaces. Um, let's just see what it makes of say Excel 13, as opposed, which just doesn't exist, I assume. Yeah, so same kind of error. Um, well, it's the same error. Um, so I'd, if you get that, then check your uh, that you've got the syntax right in the connection string. And finally, I think we'll just prove that it is still working. And good night, Vienna. I hope that was of some use. Um, so the code's trivial, um, so there's no point in posting that. But yeah, if you've got any comments to make, if it could be useful, if I thought about something else, then let me know that in the comments. But thanks for watching. Bye.